Good morning. And uh, yes, it is morning. Uh, thank you for joining me in my little neck of the woods. I am doing a video. Partly this is to test a different video format that we are using. But also I thought uh, it'd be nice to give you guys a little devotional of sort. Part of the reasoning behind that is, you know, we are, of course, uh, with everything going on in our world, trying to engage in different ways to uh, remain connected with one another. And I thought this week what I would do is a short little reflection on something I came across in our Lenten study book. And it's often when I prepare my sermons, if I prepare and I'm using a book or even doing scripture study, I go through and I get so much information, so many things I want to share, but maybe don't quite fit uh, the methodology of preaching and, and being able to share it. So this is an opportunity for me to share something a little bit more in depth. I also, it's, it's amazing to me, and I, I know many of you have this experience, but um, how often God speaks to us in things that were planned long beforehand. So I was prepared to do this book for a few months now, and I didn't know we were going to be going through everything we are in our society at the moment, but something that is in this really spoke to me. Uh, a scripture that I'd like you to kind of reflect on, and I have to find it again. Um, I had it listed out. Oh, there it is. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, For we walk by faith, not by sight. This is an important uh, scriptural concept for us to balance at this point in our society. Uh, there are some people who go, well, we walk by faith, so I should go out and, you know, shake everybody's hand. No, uh, uh, Paul is not exactly referencing that type of idea. Paul is talking about, though, how uh, our faith, so much of it resides in an area where we can't explain it or understand it. So, for instance, I cannot explain nor understand entirely how it is that some of the material I'm going over this week uh, would have been so applicable uh, due, due to our world and society. So, it's important to remember as we go through our days in the coming weeks and possibly the coming months, that in order to remain connected to one another, our faith is an essential part of that. Uh, who we believe God is and how we believe God is interacting with us and with others. But what I'd like to share from uh, our Lenten study book, and this is Canoeing the Mountains right here. Um, and he references a book called Just Listen, The Secret of Getting Through to Everyone by Mark Goulston. I have not read that book. And uh, based on this information, I would really like to read it. And he's talking about transition and what we've been talking about is adaptive leadership and how, as a church, we need to go into a new frontier, basically. Think Star Wars. Hopefully, well, maybe with just as much adventure, but, you know. Uh, but one of the things it talks about is a leader, or in this case, each and every one of us, should be acknowledging our own anxieties and fear. But we should keep from making decisions, bad decisions, by maybe running it through two different zones. There's the red zone and the blue zone. And again, this comes from that book, Just Listen, The Secret of Getting Through to Everyone. The red zone, which is red's bad, right? Red's bad. You want to stay away from red. That's when you start making decisions based on emotionally charged, uh, personalized conflict, unresolved issues in self, disproportionate intensity, conflict is unsolvable, and the conflict is always about me. So in other words, how could these people do this to me? Especially in a, in a pandemic like we are in, uh, most, there's quite a few people, I wouldn't say most, but quite a few people who are reacting from the red zone. The situation is about themselves. When you see bare grocery store shelves and lack of toilet paper, it's not because there is a nationwide shortage. It's because people were often thinking only about themselves and making decisions in that red zone. If we go to the blue zone, that is values are in conflict. Okay, so that's what is at the heart of the conflict. It focuses on the issue. Self-awareness is the key. Who you are in this conflict is the key. 
It has proportionate intensity. Not everything is a do or die moment or a do or die situation. The conflict is solved and the conflict is always about the mission. So in other words, uh, in the case of the church, the conflict is always about who we say we are and what we say we are about. For individuals during this time, your conflict might be about uh, how to get your next meal or things like that. But keep the conflict in a proportional level. There's no reason to lash out at one another or any of those types of things. One of the interesting things I found when reading this this week was the idea that anxiety, uh, our goal is not to be completely calm. Okay, Trying to be completely calm can be anxiety driven, right? And, and it can actually produce more anxiety. Uh, I'm honest, someone, in some situations, I am not the most calm person, but I own that. And I say, look, I'm not the most calm person, but I'm mim minimizing my anxiety as much as possible. And especially for today, especially for the coming weeks and months, that's one of the things I think each of us need to do is focus on calming our own anxiety as much as possible. You are not going to be devoid of anxiety. If you look at it from an evolutionary standpoint, anxiety in and of itself is a good thing. Uh, it was an evolutionary process that helped us to adapt to situations where we were in danger and to keep, be mindful of dangerous situations. What's happening right now is many people are being preyed on because of their anxiety. And, you know, going back to the scripture reference, we walk by faith. And, you know, we're smart, we do the right thing, we do the smart thing, but we also remember that sometimes we're going to be anxious. And sometimes in the end, we have to rely on our faith. So I hope you are staying safe. I, I wanted to keep this short and... Um, I just want you to know I'm praying for each and every one of you, and I hope you are praying for me. We'll continue to give video updates at different times. One of the things I'd like to do is give you an update of our plans going forward. Uh, just right now, so many things are really nebulous. It's an ever-evolving situation. But I hold you in prayer and continue to ask God for your well-being. Have a blessed day and a blessed week.